Hey guys, and welcome to day 13 of the 2012 one with Mallory Advent Calendar. Uh, today, there's only a wine and a topic. Um, it's a topic that I must disclose is 100% my opinion, has nothing to do with anybody else, nobody else was involved. It's mine, so if you're going to hate me, you just hate me and not any of the other parties involved. I just, I got this book to review, Birth Plan for Dummies. And as I was reading this book, pretty fantastic, it's 20 bucks originally on Amazon, but it's on sale for like $13 right now. But one of the things in here, chapter six talks about including family and friends in your birth plan. And since my sister just had her baby a month ago, it it's still really fresh for me. I, I had no problems with people who were in the room with me. It was supposed to be Michael and my mom. And I, I wanted Krista in the room. Michael didn't know if he wanted Krista in the room. Krista's the godmother to Michael. And... In the heat of the moment, because there are emotions just flying everywhere, the nurse said, okay, it's time to push. Who do you want in the room? And Krista got to stay. I, I didn't care. Michael was just overwhelmed, and he said it was fine. But had we have written down on the birth plan that it was just supposed to be Michael and my mom, she probably wouldn't have gotten to be in the room which would have sucked for me because I always said, hey, I would rather have two women who push babies out of their vaginas versus my mom and Michael who doesn't even have a vagina. Some days he has a vagina, but not literally. Um, he didn't like that very much. And it also touches, this book touches on people you should have in the room. Uh, it's it's a good book so we're gonna just it's a review for Mallory's deals so we're just going to touch on this because it's a controversial topic uh, at least in the case of my sister it, it was pretty amazing being in involved with her birthing process she she's very she's very particular <laughs> she she I had everything just written down and she had researched everything the down to the poops and how many it should be and she had charts and she taped the picture above the changing table of the different poops like what they should look like and she went to classes and she researched and researched and researched and she had a birthing plan a very very big birthing plan um, she's the opposite of me in the sense that I went to the hospital. I kind of knew what I wanted. I just wanted the baby to come out, to be honest. The only thing that mattered to me was the skin-to-skin -skin contact. After the baby comes out, I want him to come up on my chest first before they take him away. And I wanted... There were absolutely no pacifiers, no formula feeding, no bottles. He was to only breastfeed. I wanted him in the room with me at all times unless they took him away for his circumcision, which is a choice that I made and that is my choice, so get off of it. And I totally regret having him in the room for the whole time. Like, go to the nursery, it's okay because you can't sleep when there's always a doctor coming in to check on him and you're exhausted and what if he doesn't sleep then you don't sleep and it, it gets it gets a little intense because everyone's so tired um hers was she wanted to go all natural so we talked about her birth plan in so much detail i asked her about what happens if 
we have to do a C-section, do you want drugs at all? I was to be her sister, her doula, her photographer, and be there for moral support for John. That's a lot of work. I would do it again in a heartbeat, but holy smokes, that's a lot of work. Especially when your child is only 15, 16 months old and my vagina cried for her. It hurt so bad as she was going through um, the delivering part. I mean, she only pushed three times. It was like three practice pushes and whoop, there she is. She almost got away with no rips at all. It was, I was so jealous that three pushes and she almost didn't rip. But then at the last minute, Leah stuck her arm up and ripped her straight up into her clitoris. So she was sewn up that way, whereas I was sewn down. So it happens. You'll rip. Uh, some women talk about the pros and cons of a controlled episiotomy versus an uncontrolled tear. But Rachel didn't want to to have an episiotomy at all she wanted to tear naturally and she did and you do run the risk of you know tearing where it shouldn't tear or I guess you don't want your vagina to tear at all but the really funny thing was when they told her she, she ripped up to her clitoris she's like that's the worst news ever my clitoris I died because she was a little loopy after she delivered. She was so tired and I think she had two hours of sleep the night before, maybe four hours in the past 24 hours. I know I had 45 minutes of sleep because I stayed up working. She thought she was having mild contractions all day, but it could have been Braxton Hicks because she didn't know what those felt like. And then at, I think, 1.30, she, she texted me, the, the most bizarre text ever. It said, I have painful gas. The, oh, what? She said she felt like she had painful gas in her stomach. Okay, well, my contractions did not feel like gas. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I assumed it was like, that uh, the feeling you get down the side when you really have to take a poop but it's not quite there and you're just building up that maybe I could see that as a contraction but gas not so much so uh, I told her you know get some sleep if you can because if it is real you're gonna be tired and then I get another text or call I'm not quite sure I told her to take a bath because sometimes if you get in the water and they are pretend contractions Braxton Hicks they'll slow down I said if they keep going then you probably are in labor well she was in labor because we got to the hospital I'm going all off just random numbers it was before Michael woke up for work and it, it was it was it was exciting exhausting I do it again it took a couple weeks to recover just for everyone involved and I think why I liked it so much is because it was a really good bonding experience because we had a little bit of a rough falling out and John is, is her boyfriend. I may have been a little judgmental of him. Very judgmental of him. She brought him to Christmas when I was pregnant. And I may have flipped out. Pregnancy hormones. You gotta cut me some slack. Uh, I do not like when things don't go the way they're supposed to. I don't like sharing my holidays, my bacon on Christmas morning with someone who's just gonna be gone next year. That, that's not the way I roll. I'm very, very traditional in the sense of 
I know Christmas morning I will have XYZ, and if I don't get XYZ, I get mad. Really, really mad if there's not a giant mountain of bacon. But that that's a whole different topic. So the guess that you should have, according to this book, Where did it go? Talk specifically about mother-in-laws. Maybe you'd love your mother-in-law to see the baby just after the birth, but you're not comfortable with her in the labor and delivery room. The waiting room is best for her. Another point I would like to talk about. Supportive no matter what choices you make. If you're planning a natural birth, a supportive friend should also know how to encourage you to keep going when things get tough, but also be able to support you fully if you decide mid-labor that an epidural is what you really need. Supportive no matter what choices you make. Supportive. Supportive, supportive, supportive. Tension between mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws is extremely common. Even if it's normally bubbling just below the surface, inviting your mother-in-law, invite your mother-in-law only if you truly feel comfortable with her being there. The common theme is your mother-in-law does not join you in the delivery room because you typically have a better relationship with your own mother. I'm not saying everyone does, but I mean, your mom probably talked to you about having your period and having sex and boyfriends and you don't need a peanut gallery. Your mother-in-law stays in the waiting room. I love my mother-in-law. She's really nice. She's a fabulous lady. She will not be in the delivery room with me. My next kid, it'll be my mom because that is her right. She is my mother. This is her grandbaby. And she's already seen my goodies way more than she probably cares. So she will be there. That's just the way it works. Are you comfortable bearing all? Yeah. And I'm also a, a firm believer in uh, tell people to visit you once you get home because the hospital room, you're so tired. Like when Rachel had Leah, she was exhausted. Leah was on her chest while they were sewing up her vagina and they had to give her Pitocin because her, her placenta didn't detach. So they gave her Pitocin to deliver the placenta. And it, I love the fact that her OB should be my OB. He was, he was so much fun. <laughs> I would be friends with him if he wasn't her OB. He was so cool. <laughs> I loved him. I'm not, let, let's, the one thing I'll say without getting him in trouble. I'm pretty sure he said, let's get you drunk after the, the Leah was born because she didn't feel good. She wanted to start barfing. They gave her the barf bag. They gave her some sort of drug. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was for nausea and then pain. So she was a little medicated afterwards because her vagina hurt really, really bad. And she just pushed the baby out naturally. Now back to the whole natural thing. There are three people allowed in your delivery room at Genesis. Three. Rachel had on her birth plan. John, dad. Lori, her mom. Mallory, her sister. Not her, John's mom. And you weren't allowed to say the word epidural unless she brought it up. Strict, very strict. She wanted to hurt so bad she never wanted to have another baby again. And she might have accomplished that because she was in a lot of pain. So my job was to help her 
not get an epidural. Challenge accepted. I can do this. I did it. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. It was getting a little heated. You know, all four of us were in there because it was getting, it was getting a little intense. She was about at eight and she said she wanted to talk about her drug options. Okay. She was sitting on the ball and I said, Rachel, let's, can we try a shower? At least if you get in the shower and you give it a try, then when you look back on your delivery, you won't regret just jumping straight from, oh my God, this hurts to epidural. The nurse agreed. John agreed. He just kind of shook his head and I took her in there. She sat in the shower. She, she screamed. <laughs> By the time she got out, they checked her too far along because she was at eight with a lip. She was 100% effaced and she had just the lip and they checked her. Her water broke. It started to hurt because once your water breaks, then it's just smooth sailing from there. She really, really, really wanted it, but she couldn't have it because she had gone too far. That's exactly what I wanted her to be at because I knew she could do it. She was making, oh, she was making this delivery naturally look like a breeze. I couldn't believe it. The pain tolerance that this woman has just crazy. I still will get a drug. I'll get the drugs. Eh. I'm, not, I'm not interested in it. I'm not superwoman. I'm not trying to be Wonder Woman. I just, no. I just want, whoop. Let them come out. Cut me if you need to. Sew me up. Give me my baby. I'm good with it. Uh, so, John's mom. She brought up epidural when we weren't allowed to talk about it. And John said, don't you dare say that. Don't say that again. And then she brought it up again. And then John said, if you have to, this is just me giving you a, a roundabout answer. Uh, if, you, if you're going to say that again, you have to leave. So she got lippy with him and said, well, I have to leave. Everyone has to leave. What, woman? What? And then the nurse came back and, you know, there are three people on the birthing plan. Who, who are these people? And then asked John's mom to leave. The one thing you don't want, drama in the delivery room. I could not believe that this woman decided to threat, come back at John and say, if I have to leave, everyone has to leave. Because, the, you know, the labor and delivery is, is about you. No, it wasn't. I was helping Rachel pee at the time that that all happened. No, that was when she got asked to leave. I was helping Rachel pee. I Just some people, some people. And that's why this is completely my own opinion. I really don't care if anyone hates me. I don't, I don't. I have to deal with it. It's if you're gonna hate me, you're gonna hate me. Uh, but you just the things you don't say in the delivery room that would fall under that. So my recommendation is do not invite your mother-in-law into the delivery room unless you just love her to pieces. No. Real quick. This wine, Charles Shaw, White Zinfandale, 2011, $2.99 at Trader Joe's. It looks like a White Zinfandale. I am not a big Zinfandale person anymore. Zinfandale is a really good party wine because it's sweet. I am not a sweet wine person anymore. Not like this. You can get Zinfandales really cheap, too, and everybody typically likes them. I would use a Zinfandale more for a sangria, just 
because they're usually really, really cheap. A lot of people start drinking Zinfandel. You know, put some strawberries in it. Fancy it up a little bit, but... It's just too sweet for me. If I'm going to do sweet, I will take a Riesling or this other wine that we have that's German that we'll talk about a little bit later on a different one. So cheers to you. I, I wouldn't buy the Charles Shaw Zinfandel, White Zinfandel, unless you like sweet wines. It's not my thing. Nope. Sorry. Talk to you on a different day.